So what is a loop in programming? Well, it looks a little something like this. You have a bunch of lines of code, or even a single line of code, that you want to repeat over and over again. So you enter a loop at the top, you execute all those lines of code. Once you get to the end, the program automatically goes back up to the top and does it all over again. Now you might be wondering, how do we escape from a loop? Because as things currently stand, we just go round and round and our program gets stuck. In fact, our program in a way crashes. It uses up resources and the whole computer will become unresponsive. You've probably had an error like this when you've been browsing the web and suddenly your browser crashes and then your whole computer freezes. That's probably a loop error. It's just got stuck in an infinite loop. So we need a way to escape from the loop. And the way we escape is by telling it in one of the lines of code if something is true or false or whatever, then that's the point at which you break the loop. So there is a line of code that allows us to break out of the loop or a way that we know that the number of times we have to loop is coming to an end and that we need to stop the loop there. So a very typical example of a loop is a for loop. You get this in every single language. The syntax is a little different in each language, but the features are the same basically. So in this case, we have a for loop, which goes from i to 10. And i, in this case, would be zero. Some languages ask you to explicitly say that. So this loop is going to go uh, zero, do the loop, one, do the loop, two, do the loop, so on and so on, until it goes to 10, do the loop. And then it goes, ah, we've done this up to the number 10. So I'm going to exit the loop. Now, here's a curveball that if you're a junior programmer, engineer, whatever, they might throw at you. And you should know this, to be honest. But if you're just learning programming, you probably don't know this. How many times, if i is zero, has that loop gone around by the time it finishes? If you said 10, you're wrong. Because in this case, I'm including the 10th time. If it had a less than symbol, so if you see my video on operators, that will tell you about that, then it would be, it would end before it starts the 10th loop. But in this case, we're going from zero to 10, which is actually 11 times, because we count zero as the first loop. We don't start at one. Everything in programming is zero indexed. We start zero, one, two, three. So that goes 11 times. Finally, the last thing to say is a couple examples of a loop. So for each is a very common loop in every language on all frameworks because what it allows you to do is uh, run a loop for something like an array or a list and go through it element by element in sequential order until it reaches the end of that array and then it automatically exits. So you don't have to count things. You don't have to have I and J counting zero, one, two, et cetera. It just does it automatically. The final loop is a do while. This is a dangerous loop. Do while is deadly because you say to it, I want you to do the following while something is true or false. And the temptation is to go, well, just slam this loop in, do all of this while the callback from my server is false, right? So let's say you have a screen on your app and it's got a little spinny circle saying you're loading stuff from the web, not uncommon. Some people might say, right, we're going to do the spinny circle until the call comes back from the web as positive. So we get a result from our server. Of course, sometimes servers fail, internet connection breaks. So you never hit that while part. Your, your request will time out. So you'll never get an answer at all. Or if you do, it'll be different to the one you expect. And so your do loop will never exit, even if you do get the information. Okay, that's why I say do whiles are deadly because you have to make sure that your while clause is absolutely spot on. That's why I don't particularly like them. I like finite loops, I like for each loops and in my 10 years of doing this professionally, I've never really used a do while loop. You, you can just avoid them, you don't have to use them. Anyway, those are loops. If you have any questions or comments, drop them into the comments and let me see what you think. If you're a beginner programmer, then you're probably a bit daunted facing a landscape of hundreds of languages and frameworks. What you need, even more than programming knowledge, is clarity around your learning journey. You need a map. 
a map that shows you what technical and non-technical skills are required as an employee, freelancer, or entrepreneur. And that's where my free guide comes in, Zero Dev to Hero Dev. It outlines top-level skills you need to become an employee, freelancer, entrepreneur, or any mixture of the three. If you want a map to success, then this guide is what you're looking for. Get it for free at imdev.net forward slash hero.